Hello everyone, I'm Pat So, known as Engineer Pat 5290. Today we're going to be looking at this Norfolk and Western caboose that you see behind me that is displayed at a local museum. We're also going to be talking about the life of the caboose and who was on the train, because this car that you see behind me was a vital part of all train operations. With the advancements of technology, it's very, very rare to see one of these cabooses in operation today. So please, come along with me as we explore the life of the caboose. As we are now in the interior of the caboose, as you can see, this was the home away from home for the train crew. They had a furnace to keep warm, the head of course, a refrigerator to keep things cold, sink to wash their hands, a little stove to prepare the meals, and this is where your train crew sat. Your conductor and brakeman were in these two seats. This is a little desk where the conductor or brakeman would do their paperwork. Here's a little drop box where they could organize their paperwork. And their responsibility was to check for defects in the train. This is a bay window caboose. Because if you see out of this window here, from this angle, the conductor can see the left side of the train. And on the other side is the same thing. You can see the right side of the train. As you can see, these are his gloves of what he would wear. A sample of his paperwork and the dishes to eat dinner. The caboose was vital in all railroad operations. This is the deck where the conductor would be seated out from the back, as you can see here. They even had storage lockers to keep all of their items. And this was a vital part because this is two or three people inspecting the train throughout its journey. Now with the improvements of technology, seeing one of these computers in operation is very rare today. Right here in this little compartment is where they would store their flags, fuses, torpedoes, and hot box coolant. This is where they keep some of the supplies in case they have to go under the train working on the main track. This is where they would store them. Right here is the brake wheel which enables, which engages the brake on the car. Right down here is the coupler and the air hoses down there to provide air supply to slow the train down. Right there is the angle cock right there where you can see where the, uh, where the air pressure is controlled. And now if we come on down and we take a look at the wheels on these cars. As you can see these are pretty big wheels and as you can see the caboose was built for the nickel plate and the trucks were built in February of 1962. And it has the Norfolk and Western block letters as you can see here. And right here on this side you can see where the building information is. And it was, the caboose was built in July of 1962 for the nickel plate railroad. And then after the 1959 purchase of the, Norf the Norfolk and Western bought the nickel plate, then it was owned by the Norfolk and Western until being retired shortly after the merger of Southern and Norfolk and, Norfolk and Western. And here's the caboose itself. Although the caboose has faded into history, we will never forget seeing one of these red cabooses running along the main line. With the improvements of technology, sadly the cabooses have been, have been put away, but many are preserved like this one at local museums. I thank you all for watching this short documentary on the caboose, and I hope you all enjoy all of my videos, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Engineer Pat 5290, and I will see you next time.